uh, ELA Common Core, and we do support that. Uh, we do that through several primary source analysis, document-based questions, and research, and so forth. Um, you can see that our three-year requirement stands. Coming in as freshmen, uh, which I think most of you will see, that uh, you'll be entering into world history in one of two levels, whether that be the uh, college prep or the honors level. Um, teachers at the middle school are very, <laughs> are very aware of uh, what the requirements are. And just so you know, we typically in that honors curriculum look for someone with around an A minus average um, in their eighth grade curriculum. The next two years, US 1 and US 2 at the high school level, we still offer the CP2 and CP1 uh, honors, and then you also have the opportunity to take your advanced placement course starting your sophomore year. There have been individuals who have not taken that AP course their sophomore year and have taken it their junior year. Um, there is a catch to that, just as you saw in the earlier slides, and I just want to make sure it's clear to everyone here um, that the College Board does does require that you take both sections of that consecutively in order to essentially receive the AP standard on your um, uh, transcript. Thank you. The grade nine world history curriculum, as you can see here, um, we do have common units that uh, you'll notice are uh, at the French Revolution, World War One. Uh, those basically denote where uh, all of the freshmen world teachers have identified um, common assessments and, and common um, that they'll be using to essentially gather data um, on student scores. Uh, U.S. history, sophomore year, so this would be your U.S. one. You can again see those common units uh, as well as the curriculum that's been identified. Here we go with uh, U.S. two. This would be Junior year, reconstruction essentially all the way up through the Cold War um, and the time of Ozzy and Burke with common units as you can tell here as well, World War II and the Cold War. Being that we are a three year requirement, it also leaves us a lot of opportunity to offer a wide array of electives, which many of the students I think find. Um, very entertaining, but also very enlightening. Uh, some of our more popular ones, I think, right now, you can see is our uh, psychology and sociology, um, AP psych, which is something new over the past couple of years, which has been very popular, um, still with the requirement of it's a one-year course, but you do have the requirement of taking the AP exam, the culmination of that. And again, as far as our electives, uh, continuing AP Human Geography, um, Economics, which I think for a lot of the parents out here as far as uh, incoming freshmen, there's an introduction to Economics, which I will sort of give my shameless plug for, um, which I teach. Um, I, can't, I can't tell you enough how important it is that they be uh, involved in that program. Um, I'm amazed at, at what they don't know about money. Uh, as, <laughs> As you probably are very aware, uh, you know, when you scream, you can get out of the shower after the um, we, have, we have a few new courses which just started last year, but uh, you know, U.S. History 1945 to the present, uh, which is very entertaining, and then of course Genocide and History, uh, which most of the students uh, we've got very positive feedback on that. That's moving from a, a term course to a semester course, um, and again. Just as a side note for each of those core curricula from you know, freshman world, US 1 and US 2, there's also summer work, um, summer readings, which your students will receive roughly towards the end of June um, that will part of, be part of the sort of introduction to those courses. So now I'd like to introduce the assistant principal, but also the head of foreign languages and trust. <coughs> Well, I'm delighted to be here tonight to tell you a little bit about our um, foreign language program at the high school. Um, for many of you, this is uh, an opportunity for your students to get involved in either French or Latin or Spanish. But I can tell based on the, um, the people that are here tonight that probably the burning question is what, you know, where does your 7th or 8th grader go after um, taking 7th and 8th a language in the 7th or 8th grade? 
Um, for ninth graders, if they've taken a language in seventh and eighth grade, they'll go to um, either Spanish two in the honors or CP1 level, French two or Latin two. For other students who are beginning a language, we have um, a sequence from French one, Spanish one, and Latin one right through the AP level. So there are a lot of opportunities for students, and most students here at the high school do take at least two years of a language, and many take um, four years culminating in an AP exam, and some um, actually are immersed in two languages. So it's a very popular program, and I've been really excited to see one of the cool things about the foreign language program is they're very, very much, especially in Spanish and French, they're very um, committed to speaking as much as possible in the target language. So when you go into those classrooms, it's really, for me, because I don't speak anything, it's really fun to see them, um, to see them communicating, to figure out what's going on in the classroom, and to see how much the students are actually absorbing. So it's a really exciting program. And some of the other things that the program offers that you may have heard about are some, um, some trips abroad. Uh, last year, I believe the uh, Spanish group went to Costa Rica. This year, there's a trip going to France. Um, a few years ago, there was a trip that went to Italy and to France. So there are a lot of opportunities for students to immerse themselves not only in the culture, but also in speaking the language. Um, and again, just to reiterate, in terms of um, college preparedness, most four-year college requ colleges require at least two years of the same foreign language at the high school level. And the more competitive colleges require three to four years of study of the same foreign language. So even though a foreign language is not a requirement, per se, in our list of local requirements, it's something that you really need to keep in mind as you're preparing your student for college work. And now I'd like to introduce uh, Ms. Joan McCoy. Good evening. Isn't this what we all think about the scientists? Curly, frizzy hair, test tubes with bubbles coming out of them? Well, here at the high school, we have um, in the freshman year, we have two levels of biology. All our freshmen take biology. We have an honors and a CP um, college prep level. Um, one of the most important things with our freshmen is that we have that MCAS um, exam at the end of the year. During the middle school years, you take kind of a, a general science, you have some, a little bit of earth science, you have a little bit of um, biological sciences, you have a little bit of chemistry. But, so when you get to the high school, our focus for that first year is the study of living things. Um, our sophomore year, you can see that we have chemistry, our junior year, we have physics. And then in our senior, actually our junior and senior years, we have some electives. So I think when you see this um, picture here of a microscope, you think of microscopes when you think of biology. That year, in our freshman year, we're going to study and focus on the study of living things. Um, some of the nice things that we do outside of the classroom is we have uh, formed a partnership with Virginia uh, State University, in which they have the CASE program. Um, students are able to participate in some of the biotechnology um, labs that take place there. We have been very blessed this, this um, past year. We have had seven biology groups go over to Bridgewater, in which the students were able to um, run some gel electrophoresis. They were able to use um, spec 20s, so they use the very common, um, very up-to-date uh, equipment that we have here at the high school, but they wouldn't have that opportunity to use them as a freshman, so we're really lucky with that. In our sophomore year, we have chemistry, the study of, of the structure and composition of matter and how it relates to energy. Um, we have three levels at that point. We have our honors, we have our um, CP1 and CP2. Our junior level, um, we have physics, which is the study of motion, forces, and energy. Um, here, again, we have um, three levels present. And if you look at our junior, senior years, we have some, we have quite a few electives. We're very fortunate to offer a nice array of science classes. We have three levels of, um, we have three different AP, chemistry, biology, and physics. We have anatomy and physiology, zoology, marine biology, ocean sciences, environmental science, design and technology, and engineering and computing. So, um, as I say, most, I noticed that many of you were my incoming freshmen. Um, your, your goal is going to be to um, master biology, and then from there you're going to be able to move up. And next is my pleasure to present Mrs. Gwen Sousa, the director of the
Good evening, everyone. Students' capacity to create and express themselves through the arts is one of the central qualities that makes them human, as well as the basis for success in the 21st century. The arts, recognized as a core academic subject in federal law, provides our students with a unique opportunity to engage in creativity, one of the four C's of the 21st century learning skills, along with critical thinking, communication, and collaboration. The arts promotes work habits that cultivate curiosity, imagination, creativity, and evaluation skills, skills that business leaders, the workplace, college and universities, and our changing world demand. Pembroke Public Schools values this thinking. We provide ample opportunities for students to explore their creative passions. It's my pleasure to give you an overview of these courses in the fine and performing arts. There is currently not a graduation requirement for fine arts, but we find in the high school that over 50% of the student body elect to be part of music and art programs. Elective offerings in grade nine for semester courses include Fundamentals of Art, Studio Art One, Ceramics is a very popular course, Piano Lab, Guitar Lab, History of American Music, Music Theory One, and Music Theory Two. You'll see that we have some options there for students that are really interested in music, but might not be interested in our performing ensembles. So those specific classes would be our Piano Lab, our Guitar Lab, History of American Music, and the Theory courses. Four-year courses in grade nine, and as Ms. Sostak referred to in the, in the beginning, they're taking their full core academic courses as well as wellness and um, the other courses that are involved. It really leaves them a full year elective possibility. So if a student is going to take CBAD or the choir, orchestra, or band program, then that's kind of taking up their elective choice. We have created a new freshman band for next year. Our band program is growing so quickly that to really have great uh, teaching and learning happening um, and have you know, a sufficient number of teacher-student ratio, we have to create a section of freshman band next year. And it will mirror the same thing that we do in the choir program. So we have a freshman choir, we have a concert choir group, and then our honors level ensemble. So all freshmen that currently are in the band program and elect to continue in band are going to be in the freshman band. Band is also, uh, marching band is also a requirement of that class. The three level bands that we have will come together to create one ginormous marching band. It's an absolute blast for the kids. They really, really enjoy it. It provides uh, multiple opportunities for them socially as well. I know the freshmen uh, often feel kind of fun, they come to band camp and they get to know all the upperclassmen and they're walking through the halls that first week, you know, week of classes and there's upperclassmen high-fiving them and other people like, how do you know all these people? That's what I'm banging them. Uh, elective offerings in grade 10. Uh, we uh, have additional ones, painting and printmaking, uh, CBAD 2, web page design, and the same music electives. In grade 10, our full year courses, we um, introduced two additional ones, and those are our honors level chamber singers and honors level wind ensemble. We just this week held our auditions for next year's honors level ensemble. So those auditions usually happen right around before course selection. So for those students that are rising up that want to continue at the honors level, they audition at this time of year. Uh, elective offerings in grades 11 and 12 pretty much the same for semester courses. And in full year courses, we add our art major portfolio preparation class. This is those students that are really on that art track and going to be going to graphic design or they're applying to be an art major at school. This is their chance to build that portfolio that colleges and universities require them to submit. We also offer an introduction to 3D animation. So they're using the Maya program, a program that's used by Pixar and all of those companies that do those things. Those uh, students are getting immersed in a real world experience program. Um, and at the 11th and 12th grade level for music, we also offer an honors music major course where students that are really on that music track, they're thinking of going into <coughs> sound production, recording engineering, they're going to be in music performance world, music education. Um, they're exploring all of those music careers doing intensive theory work, preparing for their college auditions. Um, so that's a wonderful course for those students uh, working at that level. 
It's my pleasure now to turn things back over to Ms. Zostak, who will talk about the wellness program. I truly appreciate you not laughing and saying, why is it that this woman is speaking about wellness? Thank you, and physical education. I thought there might be a couple of chuckles, but I appreciate you showing great restraint. Thank you. Um, at this point, we do not currently have a department head for our phys ed and wellness program. Our athletic director functions in that capacity to some degree. Um, we do have two wonderful phys ed instructors. And um, I just want to stop for one minute, though. And for the students that are here, um, raise your hand if you've seen at least one course that we presented that you thought, wow, that's really cool. I'd really like to take that course. Excellent. If not, lie and raise your hand again. <laughs> Parents, raise your hand if you've seen at least one course that you might say, I wish I was back in high school. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> just want to know who I'm really speaking to here. <laughs> All right, so with the um, athletic piece and the wellness piece, you'll see that all high school students must fulfill a wellness or phys ed requirement each year. In grade nine, all students are required to successfully complete a semester of wellness. That's actually backed up to a semester of a Microsoft application, which is a really wonderful combination for freshmen to be taking um, as they enter the high school. And the wellness program in grade nine, the phys ed and wellness program, is just that. There's a physical education piece, there's a wellness, diet, nutrition, and health piece that goes along with it. It's about a two-week unit that repeats throughout the semester, so there's a number of different two-week units throughout. Sophomores, juniors, and seniors have a variety of options by which they can complete their wellness requirement. Um, and the students will work with their counselor to identify that option. Uh, to fulfill the requirement for sophomore, junior, and senior year, all students select one of the following options. They may elect as an existing sophomore, junior, or senior a wellness course, and I'll go into those in just a minute. They may play on a JV or a varsity athletic team at Pembroke High School for at least one season. We have a number, a large number of students that participate in some an athletic um, component throughout the course of the year. I always say, however, that oftentimes those students that could elect to not take a physical course because they play a sport, I'm sure you can imagine those are many of our students who are like, I want to take this one. I know I play a sport, but I also want to take this one. As Ms. Susan just said, they can also participate in the, in the Pembroke High School Marching Band. And if I did participate in the high school marching band when I was in high school, Therefore, in case you're wondering, I am highly qualified to speak to this section. And if you've ever been in a marching band, it is a fairly significant amount of exercise and activity over the course of the season, particularly if we're lucky enough to be able to get in enough games not having rain or snow that cancel them. And also, the, um, and that has to be cleared through the athletic and the PE department and also through the school counselor. Uh, they also can participate in, improved after, in an approved after-school intramural or athletic program or other option approved by the building principal. So if you look at it, it's grade 9 wellness opportunity and then grade 10, 11, and 12 wellness course options may include alternative fitness, which has a yoga piece, a dance piece, um, lifetime recreational sports, or which has your sort of conventional team sports. Personal fitness, which also has a number of um, individual and group opportunities for kids using our weight room, et cetera. And also that has a nutrition, diet, um, and exercise piece to that. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to someone who's much more qualified in that particular field, <coughs> Mr. James Ash, our guidance director. Good evening, everyone. I'm James Ash, Director of Guides. Um, thank you for coming out and getting a, a little information uh, to take in. And counselors, in a lot of ways, to try to keep your students uh, aware of all of these things uh, throughout their high school uh, experience. We operate uh, and hope that we are a central part of, of your students' lives as they get to ninth grade and continue on until graduation and beyond. Basically, we help students with their academic planning. Uh, we help them with their social or emotional needs should they come up. We help them with their college and career planning. 
All the counselors uh, we try to operate under some, some, some very general core values, but basically, you can see them on the screen, but basically we want to be accessible, we want to be professional, uh, and we want to um, respect uh, differences in all of our students. We want to help students and athletes just as much as we want to help the artists, um, for example. Uh, generally, we break the students down uh, alphabetically into caseloads, and we stick with those students for four years. We like to do that because we feel it helps develop the best relationship over the course of four years. We are uh, the person who is consistent uh, through the four years uh, in addition to the principal, of course, uh, and the assistant principals. We will meet with students traditionally in one-on-one -on -one settings. We talk to them in our offices and in the hallways and wherever else we can get uh, some time with them. Uh, we do have a guide seminar program, which I will talk about in more detail momentarily. Uh, we do all sorts of consultations. We email and call and to speak to parents all the time. And we have throughout a variety of evening presentations targeting freshman year and sophomore year, and particularly junior and senior year. So the seminars have been developed over time and continue to be developed. We hope that we are able to provide lots of important information and the same information to all the students. Uh, we also hope that it uh, helps enhance the relationship uh, so counselors have more opportunities to get to know their students and the students have more opportunities to get to know and work with his or her counselor. I won't go into these in great detail. You'll be hearing more about them as uh, high school continues. But basically, the seminar program freshman year is designed to help them with, or in, uh, with uh, transition to the high school. Before the end of the second uh, cycle of high school, your student, your son or daughter will have met uh, their counselor uh, in a small group setting and we will have met six times before the end of the first quarter. So that's just a way to kind of get to know them, make sure that they're getting off uh, on the right track and so on. Sophomore year, we will get into a little bit of career exploration, not necessarily deciding what they're going to do for the rest of their lives, but instead uh, helping them think about and begin to think about their interests, their values, their skills, and introduce them to the very vast world of work. Junior year, second semester, we start to formally talk about their post-secondary planning. That can certainly happen throughout high school. Uh, we're in the midst of doing that right now. We're just beginning our third cycle of junior guidance seminars, uh, helping students plan for those post-secondary years. And senior year, we will also uh, get into post-secondary planning, the, the focus is a little bit different. Junior year is a little more about exploration, thinking about what your options are, whereas senior year gets into a little bit more of the nuts and bolts of the application process. Uh, we'll be around for questions afterwards. Again, we hope that we develop good relationships and, and that your counselors in the guidance department are central uh, parts of uh, sons and daughters of high school experiences for those that are coming in, for those that have sophomores and juniors uh, and freshmen currently, we hope that we've been helpful and continue to be so. Please don't hesitate to contact our office with any questions. I'd like to turn it back over to Ms. Sostak. Thank you. All right, so that's a tremendous amount of information, particularly if you are a parent that's just entering the high school. Um, when you are able to see this slideshow, in addition to the program of studies, which gives a more in-depth description of many of these courses, it does become a little clearer. I also want you to understand that teachers are actively involved in the recommendation process. You as parents also have a say in that process. Students are also given additional information through their guidance counselors, both here and at the middle school, <coughs> regarding the courses themselves. So they are given, if they're not here this evening, they will be given much more information. They will have access to that program of studies as well. Um, the, Freshmen have, it's, it's somewhat difficult for freshmen because we're offering them all these electives and yet we're sort of telling them, you really, here's the candy jar and you only get to take one piece um, kind of philosophy, but it's important that they understand over the course of time. Um, you can see as we offer all these different opportunities where students can start to enter a particular niche. Um, we have seniors currently that might be taking three science and math courses. We have seniors that might be taking three fine arts courses. We have students that might be taking three or four music courses. As they start to become more involved in the high school, they start to become more interested in particular courses. 
However, we still have a variety of students that take a variety of courses. So I'm happy to open it up to questions, but I know the schedule that people have. I know I've looked at our March calendar, which is frightening to me. Um, so I'm sure for those of you that have other children in other levels, the March calendar is frightening to you as well. So we are sort of choosing to stay behind and answering individual questions. Um, if there are particular questions that you would like me to address as a group, we can do that. But in the past, it's been sort of more successful to kind of let people go think about it. Please know that you can email any of us. Our names are in this as well as in the program of studies. You can email any of us with specific questions once you start to look at it or look at it again. Um, throughout the process, throughout the registration process, you can always access your guidance counselors at whatever level your, your student is at. And so if there are questions that come up, we are available to answer those questions. Um, we always just want to caution that it's our intent to try to run as many of these courses as possible. Again, it depends on the number of enrollment in each of the courses. We're very fortunate to run almost every single course that we've put up here for you to look at tonight. So again, and, and that's mostly because of you and your students' gracious um, support of our programs. So I want to thank you again for coming. If you noticed, the, this group over here is so highly competitive that I'm sure there's some kind of pool going on about who spoke the longest. I'm sure I'm losing it now. That's why I was given the task to wrap up. So um, you will get to know many of these wonderful people, and they are. we are so fortunate that they are as knowledgeable in their content they are as interested and involved with your students. So if we have not met your student yet, me excluded, because I think that I've met them all. Um, if we have not met your student, we anxiously look forward to them coming to the high school. I just want to leave this evening by saying, as much as we emphasize the courses at this particular time, there's a progression for those of you that are going to be parents of ninth graders. There's a progression of transition activities so we will make those available to you. This is just the beginning. So there will be opportunities for you and your child to visit the high school, to become familiar with the high school, to hear more about our programs, to hear more about our athletic opportunities. We will go to the middle school, speak to your children there. So this is just step one of the exciting adventure of this Pembroke High School. So I welcome you all to it. I thank you again for attending this evening, and we will be here and available.